Hey guys, Lee with Untapped Potential. Today we're doing part three of Nissa's campaign. I normally do a fast forward during the battle proper, but I'm not actually going to do that today. I'm going to take this opportunity to explain the story of Zendikar a little better, as it will be relevant very soon. Your journey to the mountains becomes harder with each step. As you approach a towering peak, the darkness grows into something almost tangible. The land tells you that this is the source of the blight. You reach out to it, and suddenly your mind is overwhelmed by otherworldly visions of an ancient horror. So, our vision shows you strange beings attacking. Survive their assault to see the source of the corruption, the Eldrazi Titan, Imrakul. So a long time ago, the plain of Zendikar uh, was being ravaged by a group of forces called the Eldrazi, and a group of ancient planeswalkers sealed them away. So what we're doing here is we simply have to survive long enough for the vision of Imrakul to appear to us. We don't have to win this battle, we just have to not lose. As you can see by the fact our opponent starts with 100 life. Now, Imrakul, the card he's going to cast, has a whopping mana cost of 15, but the opponent's going to be using a bunch of things called Eldrazi spawns that they can sacrifice to add one mana to their mana pool to ramp themselves up. Fortunately, those token, those uh, Eldrazi spawn tokens have zero attack and only one toughness, but the creatures that bring them along, such as Nest Invader here and the other creatures we're going to see later, they can, in fact, hurt us. So this is more a battle of survival than it is trying to beat down the opponent. So we have, again, set two of our landfall creatures. So the first step of this process is for us just to go ahead and gain a boatload of life in order to stay ahead and take some early licks while we build up a defense. Now our opponent's on multiple colors here because red and green both make the tokens. And we know our opponent has Emrakul in their hand. I read and looked this up online. The opponent always starts with Emrakul as one of the six cards in their hand. This isn't a battle so much as it is a puzzle. And as you'll see here, he'll keep playing things like Kozilex Predator and other cards like that that keep generating him several Eldrazi spawn tokens. And you'll see that as we unfold. This battle takes place, for the most part, actually on autopilot. There's not a lot I really need to say about it. We gain life... And that's basically going to be it for the whole battle. We do a bunch of life gain, we try to do some field control every now and again, and that's that. So anyway, uh, the first expansion that should be coming out any time now is Battle for Zendikar. And it will include a new campaign that will focus on the continuing battle against these Eldrazi. Which, while in Nissa's past here, she's just getting a vision that shows they'll be coming someday. In Battle for Zendikar, they have in fact awoken because of a long story that Nyssa, Chandra, and Jace were all partially responsible for, they were all bamboozled. Except for Nyssa, who got all racist against vampires because of their history, and she didn't trust the vampire planeswalker who was trying to help. Yeah, she sort of screwed the pooch on that one. That one's kind of actually been sort of retconned away in the past couple years, so I'm not even sure how canon that is anymore. We've gone for happy tree huggy Nissa and not much more interesting Nissa, but I'm getting off topic. So in the next set, there will be a lot of Eldrazi's and a lot of allies who are the ones fighting against the Eldrazi threat. The Eldrazi are just wandering the plane, sucking up all its mana, basically gorging themselves on it. And when they're all done, the plane is essentially dead and gone. They can simply walk into the blind eternities and find another plane to feast on. Uh, the Blind Eternities is like the place between worlds that the Eldrazi and Planeswalkers can walk to. That's what that is. So, uh, several, there's three big titans, Ulamog, Kozilek, and Imrakul, the biggest one, the one we're about to see here in just a second. In the next set, Ulamog is our main target, as both Kozilek and Imrakul seem to have wandered off. They have not been seen for some time. I'm sure we will be seeing them at some point, but it isn't now. So that's basically what the battle for Zendikar is going to be, us trying to fix up our mess and try to save the plane of Zendikar. Nyssa having her big, you know, touchy-feely, I understand this plane so well moment, it has received a good chunk of the lore so far, and I'd be lying if I didn't say that her part to play so far has been dreadfully uninteresting. Call it like I see it, folks. So the opponent at this point, to return to the actual conversation of the battle, has played a bunch of the Eldrazi spawn tokens, and he has enough mana that next turn he can simply cast Imrakul and end this battle. I'll uh, make sure to linger on what Imrakul can do for a moment in order to show you exactly what it is we're up against here. When I say these things are big and scary and otherworldly, I'm not kidding. The Eldrazi are super cool. In the first time we saw them, they were all colorless. 
but now they can have colors. Okay, so uh, he can't be countered. After you cast him, you get another turn. He has flying, protection from all spe color spells, and annihilator six, which means that when it attacks, we instantly have to sacrifice six permanents. Fortunately, though, we don't have to win this fight. We just had to see that, and since we did, we successfully uh, won this event. So we get to look forward to more of that in the future. Battle for Zendikar is going to be fun. You've seen too much. The power of the entity hibernating within the land threatens to drive you mad. You scream, clinging desperately to sanity. Around you, the mountain, the horror within it, all disappear and I click too fast. But you get the idea. So our planeswalker spike spark ignited in the horror of what we have seen. And next, we find ourselves on Lorwyn. Thanks for watching.